Mr. Speaker, this morning I rise to provide my honorable colleagues with an update on the COVID-19 entry and exit safety and health protocols that have been developed for our public schools and which are now ready for implementation at the start of the upcoming school year. Mr. Speaker, children are at the forefront of everything that we do at the Department of Education. The COVID-19 pandemic has made the safety of students and staff even more paramount. When our public schools opened in September 2020, the safety, health, and well-being of all students and staff will remain a priority. Oftentimes, it is not known the extent of work required for developing new systems, processes, and procedures. So this morning, I plan to share with my honorable colleagues and the general public the detailed work and careful attention that's been given when developing the entry and exit protocols for our public school buildings. Mr. Speaker, during shelter-in-place quarantine back in April this year, the Commission of Education reached out to the technical office of the Department of Health to seek their lead with developing safety and health protocols for all of our public schools. Specifically, there was a request for protocols in each aspect of a student's participation in a school day. The intent was for the Department of Education to know what safety and health procedures would be required from the time a student arrives at the school premises, enters the building, walks to their classroom, participates in class lessons, visits the bathroom, goes to lunch, to leaving at the end of the school day. In essence, Mr. Speaker, a student's movement on a typical day was tracked, and then a protocol was designed around that movement. Also, the aim to develop an entry and exit safety and health protocol for each school level, preschool, primary, middle, senior, and our special school, Dame Marjorie Bean Hope Academy, all known as Dame. Mr. Speaker, during the shelter-in-place quarantine, principals for each school level worked together with their staff and were tasked to provide information in response to the following question during, due to COVID-19. One, what are the risks associated with being inside the school building? Two, how can these risks be mitigated? Three, how, what would be required for schools to operate during physical distancing? Detailed information was received for all school levels and shared with the technical officers in the Department of Health who used the information to develop and frame the safety and health protocol. It is important to note that current research, the input from school staff, the input from health professionals were all key factors and information considered. Mr. Speaker, in May, the first draft revision of entry to exit protocols had been developed for each public school level. The draft protocols were shared with all school leaders for their initial input and subsequent feedback from their school's COVID-19 response team. Several iterations were developed, reflecting a high degree of thoroughness and diligence to obtain a sound framework of school safety and health protocols. Mr. Speaker, the protocols were pre-tested for each school level to determine feasibility, practicability, and to get additional feedback on what revisions were needed. A pre-testing schedule was established for one full week in May, and teams were asked to do walkthroughs of the protocols at our largest schools at each level. The walkthroughs are held at Work Preschool, West Pembroke Primary School, Delwood Middle School, and Dane. The pre-testing teams comprised of the Department of Education office staff, Department of Health representatives, custodians, school principals, and representatives from all three unions. Mr. Speaker, the development of the health and safety protocols for the senior school level were delayed at that time as senior schools were continuing with remote learning for all students. However, feedback contained, obtained from the pre-testing exercise was meaningful and supported the refining of the health and safety protocol, school protocol document. Once entry, exit to entry safety and health protocols were finalized, each school principal was provided a copy to customize for their respective school buildings. This process was completed in June 2020, prior to the end of the school term. Mr. Speaker, several Department of Education technical officers, such as school psychologists, curriculum officers, IT technicians, mentor teachers, and school service officers visit our schools on a daily basis to serve both teachers and students. As such, the Department of Health Officer is currently working on finalizing specific safety and health protocols for Department of Education technical officers, which will ensure that we cover all bases in ensuring safe school buildings. Mr. Speaker, the entry to exit safety and health protocols are comprehensive documents that reflect the current research and input of school staff, union representatives, and the technical expertise of staff from the Department of Health. The detailed guidance constitutes an appropriate mix of rigor and realism for, edu for the educational setting. The protocols aim to, one, provide safety and health guidance for our school operations, two, keep sick students and staff out of school buildings, 
And three, ensure an adequate response when someone is found to be ill on school premises. Mr. Speaker, I'll now highlight a few, I, I will now share a few highlights of the entry and exit protocols that we developed. One, upon arrival at the schools in the morning, a screening will take place to ensure children are free of symptoms of COVID-19 or any other illness. Two, the screening, this screening includes temperature checks, a three-point questionnaire, and appropriate follow-up measures. Three, parents will be required to, be wear, to wear face coverings when on school premises, but will not be allowed into school buildings to ensure a health and safe bubble. Four, key feature, uh, a key feature of our, our safety plan is the use of bubbles consisting of the same group of children. Children will remain in their bubbles and observe physical, appropriate physical distances. Four, preschoolers, primary and middle school students are not required to wear masks at this time. Mr. Speaker, senior school students will be required to wear face masks while on the school premises. However, students at all school levels who become ill during the school day will be required to wear a mask if tolerated and isolated and supervised until they are collected by a parent or guardian. School staff at all levels will be required to wear masks throughout the day while they are on the premises and in the buildings, including when they are in close contact with children or their colleagues. Mr. Speaker, other protocols include the installation of signs and floor markings as reminders of now well-known preventative practices hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene, and physical distancing. School staff will supervise outside play in bubbles consisting of the same group of children who will be asked to engage in contactless play and observe appropriate physical distancing. All equipment used by children and staff will be sanitized before and after use, and children will not share equipment and supplies. Staff will be subject to similar restrictions with movement around the school building, and leaving the school facility during the day for appointments will be discouraged. Mr. Speaker, as I shared earlier this September, in, as I shared earlier in this statement, the entry to exit protocols and health protocols were developed for every school level. Preschool, primary, middle school, and our special school day. These protocols will be posted on the Department of Education's website at www.moed.bm for access by parents, guardians, and the general public. Individual schools will be asked to post the customized protocols for their respective school sites. Developing these protocols was a mammoth task. The Ministry of Education would like to extend our deepest gratitude to nurses Lynn Jackson and Health, Healthy Schools Coordinator Ms. Marie Beach from the Department of Health for their diligence and countless hours spent developing the protocols and working with the Commission of Education. I also must extend my thanks to the Department of Education staff, principals, school staff, and union stakeholders for their contribution the development of these comprehensive safety and health protocols for our schools and for the protection of our staff and students. Mr. Speaker, we encourage our educational family to continue to use the BPSS Family Feedback Form to send their questions, concerns, and kudos about the work taking place in our schools and at the Department of Education. Lastly, we encourage our parents and the general public to visit www.moed.bm to review the COVID entry and the COVID-19 entry to exit safety and health protocols developed in preparation of opening all of our school buildings in September 2020. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.